In an event-driven system, you have two distinct components, the producer, which publishes the messages, and the consumer, which handles them. Typically, publishing a message is very fast, you're just sending it off to a broker, however, the consumer is more compute-intensive. So in this video, we're going to explore how you can scale the consume side in an event-driven system. This is the current architecture of our webhooks event-driven system. When something significant happens in the system, we publish a message, or an event, to the events queue inside of our message broker. In the example, this is going to be RabbitMQ. Then we have a consumer, which is going to pick up this message, and then it's going to find all of the subscribers that should receive this webhook and send another message to the queue, which is going to be handled by an individual consumer, and this is the component that's responsible for actually sending the webhook request to the external subscriber. And from this perspective, you can see how publishing a single event is a fast operation, while sending the respective webhooks is an expensive operation because we can have a large number of subscribers. So we're going to explore how we can scale the process side inside of our webhook system by scaling the consumers. Currently, the webhook dispatcher service is responsible for publishing a webhook dispatched event, and we handle this in the respective consumer. The consumer is going to scan our database to find all of the subscriptions for the given event type, and is going to queue up the webhook triggered event. Finally, the consumer of this event is what's actually going to send the HTTP request and execute the webhook for the specific subscriber. So how are we going to scale this? Well, one approach could be simply scaling out the webhooks API service, which is the only service that we have. The side effect is that this will also scale the parts of the system that we don't necessarily want to scale. We only want to scale the consume side and not the publish side. So what I'm going to do is introduce another service into our solution. So let's add a new project. It's going to be an ASP.NET Core Web API, and I'm going to call it Webhooks Processing. Let me scaffold the project with some sane default values, and I'm going to enlist this in Aspire Orchestration right away. So let me create this project. You can see what we have out of the box. So let me clean up the program file to get rid of anything that is not necessary for our use case and what we want to do with this service. And this is all we are left with. Now in the Aspire app host, you can see that this project was added into the orchestrator. And let's go ahead and give it the respective references to the database and the queue so that it can interact with these external services. The next thing I want to do is to make the setups between our two services as similar as possible. So I'm going to move over the things that I'll need from the webhooks API. One of those is going to be a connection to the database. So I'll be copying over that part. The commented out code is no longer necessary, so we can delete it. The next thing we have is our mass transit configuration with the respective consumers, which are currently in the webhooks API service. And then we have some open telemetry setup. So before I can do this, I need to set up the required NuGet packages. So I'm going to copy the packages in the webhooks API, and I will paste them into the webhooks processing service. I'm going to get rid of anything that is not necessary. For example, I won't need the EF core tooling, so I'm going to delete that. And this service won't need Swagger, so I'm also going to delete that NuGet package. And the remaining services I'm going to leave in place. Now, let me copy the setup that I have here, and I'm going to add it to my webhooks processing service. So let me paste it here. Now, you will see that I have some missing references. For example, I don't have access to the consumers, to the database context, or the diagnostic config. So how I'm going to solve this right now is by doing some copy pasting. Let me copy the content of the open telemetry folder where I have the diagnostic config and I'm just going to update the activity source name from webhooks API to webhooks processing. And then I will reference this in my program file. When it comes to the database context, I could just import this type by referencing the webhooks API service. Now I want to keep them decoupled. So I'm also going to copy the database context and paste it into my new service. And let's also copy the models where I'm only going to keep the webhook delivery attempt and the webhook subscription. So I'm going to delete the order type from this project. And now I should be able to register my database context. If you wanted to avoid this duplication, and you should, then the solution is to simply extract these files 
into a separate class library that you can reference from both of the services. We could distribute this as a NuGet package if we wanted to keep the services in different solutions. But to keep everything simple, I'm going to continue using the copy-paste approach. So the next thing we need is our two consumers inside of the processing service, and they're currently in the webhooks API. I'm going to grab both of the consumers, create a services folder in the webhooks processing service, and then I'm going to paste the consumers, effectively removing them from the webhooks API project. So now I'll be able to register them as consumers, but if we take a look inside, you will see that we encounter our next problem, which is not having access to the two messages, webhook dispatched and webhook triggered. So I can solve this in two ways. Again, I can add a reference to the webhooks API project. I can duplicate these types in both of my projects. And as long as the namespace is the same, it should work just fine. Or I can just create a class library for sharing my contract. So let's go ahead and add another project. It's going to be a class library and I'll call this the webhooks contracts. It will be a .NET 9 project. And let me get rid of the default class. Next, I'll take the two messages that I have, webhook dispatched and webhook triggered and move them into the contracts assembly. Then I'm going to add a reference to this assembly to both of my projects. And now you can see that both of them are compiling. The next issue is that I mark these types as sealed. So let's make them public so that I can actually share them between my services. So now everything will compile nicely and we have moved over our consumers into the webhook service. Next, I need to solve a couple of compiler warnings. For example, I don't need to be registering the consumers in the webhooks API project. And these are all the changes I need to make here. So I'm going to close this down. Next, I'm going to adjust the namespaces of my contracts by using the adjust namespaces refactor. And this is going to update the import statements inside of my consumers. And then I'm going to also adjust the namespaces in the webhook processing service. So let's use the adjust namespaces refactor. And now I should be able to build my new service, which is going to reveal my next error and this is the reference to the orders database set. So I no longer need this. I'm going to get rid of that. Building the project again will probably reveal another issue. And this is the webhook payload type, which I'm missing. So let's also take that from the webhooks API and move it into our webhook processing service. I will need to update the import statement, but I'm actually just going to update the namespace. So this is going to be webhooks processing and then services. So let me close this down. And now my consumer will compile. And if I build the project again, my build will succeed and I should be able to start my application. So let me show you what's going to happen now. Aspire is starting up my services and you can see I have two projects here, the webhooks API and the webhooks processing service. By decoupling them, we have gained the ability to scale them independently. But first, let's just make sure that this works as expected. I'll send a request to create an order and you can see that this completes. And if we take a look at the distributed traces, you can see that we now have two services inside of this trace. So let's go inside and examine what we have. In blue, you can see the webhooks API, which is our producer component, and it's responsible for accepting and publishing a webhook event. But our consumer, which is the webhooks processing service, is a separate component, which you can see in the distributed trace. So we are publishing the event to our message broker, and then we are consuming it asynchronously to send the webhooks to the respective subscribers. So I promised that the point of this refactoring is to be able to scale the consumer. So let me show you how we can do that. Inside of the Aspire app host, I can go ahead and say that my webhook processing service should have a couple of replicas. Let's say I want to have three replicas, and this means that Aspire is going to spin up three instances or replicas of my service, which are all going to connect to the same RabbitMQ instance and process messages. Aspire is also going to add a proxy in front of our services, which is going to act as a load balancer. So with just this line of code in place, let me start the application again. And this time you will see that our webhooks processing service now has three instances and all of them are up and running successfully. So if I send the request to create an order, this is going to complete. And then if we examine the distributed traces, you can see that it's somewhat different. So we still have our webhooks API producing the webhook and sending it over to our queue. 
But on the consume side, you can see we have a couple of different services. One of those services is going to handle the webhook dispatched event, and then it's going to queue up the webhook triggered event, which are then handled by our free instances that we have. So you can see here that one of the instances is handling the message, and then there is the second instance and the third instance, all handling one of the webhook subscriptions. And this type of setup allows us to infinitely scale the consumer side, which is the most compute intensive component inside of our system, because we have to communicate with external services and handle any failures. So if you are enjoying this video so far, make sure to smash the like button. And now that we have our system set up to be scalable, what are some of the next things that we should consider to improve our webhooks implementation? The first thing that comes to mind is resilience. So that's what we're going to focus on next, how to make our webhook publish more resilient and what are we going to do if we encounter a failure. And then another topic that we will have to explore is going to be security. If you found this video valuable, then I think that you should watch this video next. Check out my courses to improve your software architecture skills and until next time, stay awesome.